Buenas tardes, good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, uh, you are in the U.S. Thank you for being here with us, a beautiful session in Andalucía. And, uh, well, let's begin with Julia, uh, Associate Director of Sales of Some Marketing in Made for Spain and Portugal, that is our technology uh, leader here. Julia, give us a hand. Let us know. <laughs> Hello, hello, everybody. So excited to be back with you. So as always, you are all muted, so we can't hear or see you. If you have any questions, please do send them along at any time in the little question box on the control panel. I will be reviewing them and we'll get to them all at the end. And again, this will all be recorded and delivered to your inbox tomorrow, along with um, a little guide with insider tips. So that's it for me, Virginia. Gracias, thank you so much. And the, uh, oops, sorry, I don't know what was that. Okay, so we are going to be uh, discovering today a beautiful part of uh, Andalusia. Uh, it's the province of Huelva and uh, the southern part of it, the, the coastal one, with Huelva City, El Rocío and Almonte. And it's a beautiful uh, part of Spain uh, with very different uh, things that make it very very unique this is the the church of the virgin in el rocio we'll get there so <clears throat> southern europe uh, uh, andalusia in the southern part of spain so you know even if it is uh, europe we have very nice uh, beautiful weather uh, here so it is the perfect place to to really you know be outdoors and enjoy in this new world we're going to be living in very shortly so this is the area, is the southwest uh, area of Seville. It's a fabulous uh, province with 122 kilometers of coastline. So lots of beautiful fun. Uh, from Seville, very close by. This, uh, to go to Huelva from Seville, is the same road that will take you to uh, Lisbon and to the Algarve and the Alentejo. And uh, so everything is kind of close by. The border with uh, Portugal is, is kind of a little less than two hours. And the uh, 45 minutes drive uh, from Monte, Rocio from Huelva, very nice. So let me begin with this uh, big square in Huelva uh, city. Uh, and with a gentleman here, very important to all of us and very important uh, to America also is Christ Cristobal Colón. So let's begin with that. Uh, we are going to be speaking about him later on. So Huelva is uh, located at the, uh, by the water, by the rivers and the sea. Beautiful uh, city with lots of, uh, you know, taste of America. There is something about America in this, in this city, in this province. Beautiful, huge churches. It was very important uh, for the commerce. And the Museum of Huelva, you haven't seen many museums. And, you know, it's nice to visit museums. Sometimes people get a little fed up of museums. But this is very important uh, to me and to my heart because uh, the, there's, you know, a group of people uh, that live in this part uh, of Spain, maybe 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 years ago. It's called the Tar Tartesos. It was the name of the these people. And we don't have very clear exactly where the cities were, where the villages were, where, where they live in. But it's in this area, and we have found uh, many things that can be seen in this museum. So to me, it's very important. Uh, Tarteso is a kind of a magical, magical for all, all the Spanish people. So the gorgeous. So also Colon, America, as we're saying, and the Columbian uh, sites, very, very important. Uh, in this part of the world. This is a, a place to visit here, is the, this monastery, uh, it's very old. Uh, here is where Christopher Columbus, we don't know if he was a Spanish, if he was Italian. Uh, many say that he was from Mallorca or from Catalonia, we don't know. What we do know is that this gentleman uh, was going all his way through Spain and Portugal trying to get some money to do uh, or accomplish his dream, that was to go on a boat and, you know, follow the sun, the, 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 the sun and go to discover the land that he thought was there. He actually was, you know, thought it was a shortcut to go to India. Uh, so when he got there, he thought he was getting into India, but he was really getting in America. So in his, you know, fight to get a little money, he ended up uh, in this monastery 
And so we can visit and see the same place he was there trying to get money from the Catholic kings and from the uh, other people. Well, uh, this brick cloister, small little cloister, uh, is in this monastery. And I want to speak about it a little for a second because uh, the architectural style is called Mudejar, Mudejar. And uh, if you speak of France, uh, if you speak of Gothic, architectural style that is France is French if you speak of Renaissance that is Italy but if you speak of Mudejar that is Spanish and you see a lot of buildings made out of brick in beautiful shapes all over Latin America and all over Spain so this is the only architectural style only architectural style that is 100% Spanish and he has a lot of the Arabic flavor, Moorish flavor, because he was, they were the Arabic and the Moorish uh, craft uh, man, workers, doing it. But it was always in Spain. Many times they were the Moors working for the Jews or for the Christians, but always Spanish architectural style. And this convent, this monastery, is done in this area, in this style. So this is one of the big rooms where, you know, Christopher Columbus uh, meet the kings and other important people asking for money, uh, you know, when he was trying to, to fulfill his dream. Beautiful shape. I love this uh, Mudejar is the name of these uh, uh, ceilings, uh, because to me they look like if you get a bolt and turn it upside down, up, upside down. So what you have down, it comes the, the ceiling. So that's very, very Mudejar, always in, in good, with lots of work. So very nice, very Spanish, while he was discovering. And, you know, the caravels, this boat that uh, Columbus finally got, apart from this, from a pier, we can take travelers to this pier and see the replica of these uh, caravelas, we call them. They had three. And the, you know, the, the, the replica is here. So it can be seen exactly how big they were, uh, how people lived inside there. Um, it's like very, very nice. And you see the coat of arms here. This is Leon and Castile, this Castile. This is Aragon, uh, part of it, this small part of it is Catalonia now. And uh, it's the kingdom of Aragon, so Ferdinand and Isabel. And Granada, the symbol of Granada, the pomegranate in the center because they, you know, the pomegranate was a very important symbol because they conquered Granada, ending up conquering the, the entire Spain. So this is sort of reconquering. This is how they lived, uh, how they cooked indoors. You know, they have, have all these preserved meats, hams. Uh, you know, this is how Christopher Columbus and everybody lived in, in that boat, in that ship. So it's very nice to really learn, you know, look at the, the beds and how everything was. So these were the kind of artifacts. They, you know, they land in a foreign land with they know nobody. They didn't know if there was going to be a million people there fighting them. They were brave people, needless to say. So another very peculiar thing that I love of Huelva province is the Rio Tinto mines. The Rio Tinto, Rio is river, so is the name of the river. Uh, some British guys, again, in this part of uh, Spain, uh, came and opened up some mines. Uh, this Rio Tinto is one of the biggest uh, mine company in Australia nowadays, and it's the stock exchange, it's really big company now. Those years in the beginning of the 19th century wasn't that big, they, they were beginning, and they began in this part of, of Spain, but they were not the first one mining here. These are supposedly the oldest mines in the, in the or one of the oldest mines in the in the world. Uh, maybe five thousand years uh, ago, we were mining here, really. And what is amazing, you see the color of the water is red. We have people from the U.S. those that take the coats and go to to moon. Uh, astronauts, I don't know how you call them, and uh, you know they 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 study here how the conditions are because the conditions are very similar to the conditions in Mars. So it's really fun. You know, you see the water, the color uh, is very, very impressive. So we take clients here to visit and it's really like going, you know, the kids love it because it's such an experience. They even have a, an old train going through the mines. But, you know, what to me is very impressive is, is really remember that for hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years we have been here mining. And it was on the on the paper like, 
10 days ago uh, that they just found a big bag with all full of Roman coins and it was a little Roman treasure. So it's, it's still, you know, <laughs> it's very alive in there. It's very impressive. This is the train. Um, it's a very nice special visit. So all this Rio Tinto train goes from the inland all the way to the pier uh, in Huelva. So we have these two very important piers to visit. It's very, very unique because, you know, the British took the, the things from our mines, put them on the train, to put them on boats, to take them to Great Britain. So you remember uh, two sessions ago, we were speaking how uh, how the Romans came to Spain, you know, to take out, you know, the silver, the gold, and put it, you know, on, on boats and went to Rome. So, you know, the British did the same. I guess we did the same when we went to Mexico. And Anyway, this is a very fun visit and very, very special. And what makes this, area amazing is the natural park of Danyana. I love it. It's, it's, it's amazing place. It's great for all types of sports, but for seeing animals. Spain is very big for bird watching. So because of many of the birds that spend the winter in Morocco, they spend the summer in the north of Europe. So they go through here and stop here. So it's very great place for doing a uh, bird watching. But we also take clients here to see the Iberian lynx, but it's a safari, but it's a photo safari. So it's very, very fun. We also have like the tents and they, you know, make it very, very unique and very, very special. And the Iberian lynx is a, is a kind of cat. I mean, it's not as big as a lion, but I tell you, you don't want to be in front of him. But it's so beautiful. What, look at these guys. Aren't they handsome? Very, very special babies. So lots of biking, hiking, you know, it's by the water, the sun. If you remember, we were speaking yesterday about um, uh, San Lucar de Barrameda. No, no, it was last week. San Lucar de Barrameda at the other side of the river. It was natural park of the Llana. This is what you see as you cross that river. Full of birds, you know, totally protected, very, very well kept. It's, it's a paradise. It's like, a, you know, a big land for all of us, full of autism wonderful place for going sports the horseback riding the biking the hiking uh, they have 600 uh, kilometers footpath so for somebody who really wants hiking this is this is paradise no wonder and this is at the other side of this uh, water you see the uh, the rocio church the rocio hermitage uh, which is a huge place for everybody in andalusia to go on pilgrimage uh, we have, there are still some private houses in, in the park and by the park, so we have some access to, you know, very unique, special experiences uh, inside the natural park. So important to, to mention, really. It's gorgeous, right? I mean, it's unique and unbelievable. Lots of peace and lots of animals. It's, it's very well kept, very protected. And it's really lots of fun to explore. So the biking, the bird watching. And this is El Rompido, which is like a, a finger of sand that gets into the sea, the river, uh, the sea, sorry. And uh, it's a fabulous place also for going on holidays because, you know, it's very quiet, very protected. You don't see weird buildings or anything. It's really paradise. It's very, very few people here. So very, very not very amazing, very, very authentic, if you know what I mean. Very, very authentic. But Las Cañas Beach is, you know, these beaches here are what, some of the most beautiful beaches in, in Europe. Um, and, you know, again, uh, we keep thinking when, at least I do when I'm here, that, that the other side of the ocean, it's America. So it's very nice. So we also take clients fishing, uh, boats. This is the pilgrims I was speaking to you about. They take the Virgin from this church and take it to the village. And then the other year, they take it back to the, to the church. So it's really impressive. This is the Virgin of El, El Rocio. And it's huge. They didn't do it this year. You, you, it's very obvious why. So I'm really wondering how they are going to be doing it uh, next time, because I tell you, the Andalusians love this virgin. So it's, it's a very fun uh, 
Romeri is a very fun uh, getting together. We were speaking about the Hispanic Arabic horses, so this is one of the best places to, you know, that we suggest travelers to go horseback riding because, you know, we think this, this park is, is fabulous. We have great horses here. We also produce wine, so we take travelers here to, to visit and do the wine tasting. It is one of the top uh, wineries in the area, doing very good visit. Very beautiful and, of course, golf. Golf, again, beautiful golf courses, but it's very nice when you are playing golf and seeing the sea. Sea has something, that fun, beautiful energy. So, Seville, this is a great day excursion from this part of Andalusia and Cadiz, very nearby. So, you know, we know it's spring in all of Spain when we go to the food market and begin seeing strawberries from Huelva. The, the best strawberries in Spain come from Huelva. So I thought I had to include this because in the south of Spain, the weather is very nice, but even in December, January, February, when it's a little more chilly, we have lots of sunshine. So we have these uh, greenhouses and produce great strawberries well and great everything. I mean, as you can imagine, we produce many, many things. But the strawberries of Huelva are, you know, Huelva is for us about ham, strawberries and prawns. So these are the little pigs, uh, black pigs producing our beautiful, fabulous, unbelievable Iberian ham. I'm a fan. And we are going to be speaking about more about this Iberian ham and these little uh, animals on Tuesday next week, because in this same province, but at the other side, this in the mountains is where they live. But you know, this ham can be tasted all around and it's really unbelievable. So, mm, yummy. Okay, and the browns. The browns from uh, Huelva, we were speaking the other day also. Very nice. And the clams. You see the fisherman in the beaches, you know, going in the evening at sunset to get all these clams, you know, fabulous. And in this uh, part of the world, we do, we love uh, sweets here. And they do tons of sweets here because uh, the egg yolks, the eggs, uh, the yellow part, uh, is uh, is the, 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 is being used for producing the sweets, while the whites are used to clarify the wine. We'll get in there soon. Okay, so this is some of the sweets in this area. So restaurants, Aires de Doñana, uh, you know, it's in Doñana Natural Park, and fabulous food. As you see, it's very rustic, but you know, don't trust it because then you get in there and they are very sophisticated. This is the tuna fish, very important for our part. This is a canton, also in, in the city of Huelva. Very, very sophisticated, very nice, great uh, Spanish, you know, chef, you know, going that step beyond. Really, we love it. Atabache in Huelva also, fun. Place to be, great food, and you know, great uh, raw products. So artisan works, the, the, the crafts, the lace, ceramics, painted, hand painted, and everything related to equestrian. So for travelers in Seville that maybe want to go to Lisbon or to the Algarve or to the Alentejo, and we have a driver taking them, what we usually do is turn that transfer of one day into a day excursion. So they go to El Rocio, they visit, they learn, they visit the natural park or whatever. And a great buy is anything related to leather. So Hotel La Malvasia in El Rocio, it's very, very nice. We don't have many, many choices here. So this will be a fantastic one with great gastronomy, of course and great service. And then the Parador, look at this Parador. I mean, it's not in a castle, it's not in an old palace, not a historical place, but look at where it is located. Nobody can build anything in this natural park. If you stay in the Parador, you are right there in a beach that nobody else is. It's really magical and amazing. And of course, you know, the Paradores, they have fabulous, uh, fabulous gastronomy, always local gastronomy, always the best place to enjoy the local gastronomy. And in El Rompido, we have this beautiful property, precise, very nice. That will be our third choice with very good food and the golf course. So wide open spaces, outdoor experiences, and of course, keeping away from the crowds. 
and we are here for you and for your travelers to stay on the space, safe side. And again, this is me and Alonso, my business partner, uh, here to help with whatever thing you need. Julia, do we have questions today? We have a few questions, so if anyone has any last minute questions, please go ahead and get those in. In the meantime, Virginia, what is the best airport to fly into to get to this area? Uh, I would say Seville or Jerez, even. Uh, remember, uh, I we were speaking how Jerez is an international airport with many connections to, to Europe, uh, so that works very well. So I would say that, yeah, definitely. Okay, and about how many days would you say that clients would need in this area to get the most out of it? Thank you for saying the clients, because I was going to say I could spend a life here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, you know, uh, depending on the trip they are doing, but this is an area to really explore and relax. I mean, it's a place to, if you like hiking and outdoors and biking and natural life and natural landscape and photography and food and slow travel, this could be paradise if you are here even five nights or a week. I mean, it's really tons of things to do, great food to taste and many places to go. And remember also the golf, even if uh, you know, if uh, if you don't like hiking or, or biking, we have a lot of many golf courses and it's very, very nice and uh, beautiful. And also, uh, I didn't put the slide here this time, but um, you know, sailing these areas is very, very beautiful. Uh, so we were saying we have these huge uh, beaches with, within the natural park. So they visit them from the sea is a very amazing view. So that is a very amazing experience. So there's a lot to do here. Really, Julia, very, very much to do here. Fantastic. And now, speaking of the golf, we've talked about a few different areas of golf. What area that we've spoken of so far is best for serious golfers? Valderrama. Totally. Soto Grande, Valderrama. The ones, the place we were speaking about yesterday, two days ago. So I would say the, the Valderrama Golf Course, the Soto Grande, the area of Finca Cortesin Hotel. Uh, but you know, it's, it's with the golf in Spain, it's like when you, when sometimes we get requests from some of you, uh, like Virginia, my clients want to go to the wine region. And you know, my hair is like, wine region, we produce wine everywhere. What is the wine region? So, uh, you know, we have the classic areas uh, with Rioja and, and Rivera and a couple others. But we produce wine everywhere. So we do play, we do have very nice golf courses uh, all, all, all around. But for a serious golfer, I would say Valderrama, Soto Grande. You know, get yourself in Finca Cortesin, get one of the of the villas, you know, stay put there four, five, six days and play golf. Because not only Valderrama is right there, you have Soto Grande, you have uh, the Finca Cortesin, but there are many, many other golf courses that are among the top ones in, in the area. So, it sounds like a great plan. In Europe, I, I guess Valderrama is maybe number one in Europe even, so, so really important. Great. And then after that, after that, jump into Portugal, because in the south there are many other golf places. <laughs> <laughs> we actually do have a question about that. So how would you combine this area of Spain with Portugal? Okay, uh, I would personally, I mean, if the travelers want to be like playing golf big time and being by the water, definitely you, you'll combine it with the south of Portugal with the, with the Algarve. But to me, it's, it would be a great trip to land in Lisbon, go to the Alentejo area, very off the beaten path, great food, great wines, explore, hiking, biking, photos, the prehistorical sites. And then, you know, from Alentejo, come to this area because it's also very off the beaten path with great value for your money and fabulous food and the, the beach and the everything. So, you know, I would combine like that really, maybe the, the this part of, of Andalusia with the the alentation. The, the alentation, yes. Alentation. Okay. And speaking of combining, um, 
as this is such a different area of Andalusia, would it be too ambitious to combine it with Cordoba and Granada? Well, you know, thinking maybe I am, you know, putting together an itinerary for travelers next year. I could say it would be great, like staying in Ubeda and Baeza. We'll get there in some a few sessions. Or with the La Bobadilla we're speaking about in, in the Antequera area, where you can stay a few days, four or five, and then come to this part and stay another four or five days. Uh, so that could be a very good uh, combination because from Ubeda Baeza, you can very well explore Cordoba and Granada. And then coming here, you can very well visit uh, Seville uh, and maybe Cadiz, which is nearby. So you'll be outside the main cities, being very able to, and, and doing it, and visiting the, the cities, uh, but also with a lot of exploring uh, of the beaten path, you know, visiting the artisans, meeting them, you know, meeting the many local uh, communities and people. So very interesting. I think it's very nice. We'll, we'll combine very well, Julia. <laughs> okay. And how about clients that only have four or five nights? Is it safe to assume that this region would be more for second time visitors to Spain? Why? <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> I don't know. But, you know, I think it is important to visit Seville. Seville is fabulous. I mean, it's one of my favorite places in the world. Or it's very important to visit Granada or Cordoba. But, you know, we live a moment in life that we like more the intimate, you know, getting close to people, getting really, being really able to stay four or five nights somewhere to really explore and get to see really how people live, you know, the lifestyle, how they spend the days, what is important for them, uh, what are their needs, what are their likes. Meanwhile, you are, of course, visiting the, the big city nearby that is a must, uh, but you're going to, to get much more out of it this way of traveling, I think, is more, I don't know, I think it's more what we are looking for now. I don't, I, I think it would be a great choice. That's why we are here. <laughs> and if people are combining with Sevilla, for example, where would you recommend they stay in Sevilla? Oh, a hotel in Seville, in Sevilla. Well, the hotel in Seville is the Alfonso XIII, is the... Uh, Stargut, I guess now it's not a Stargut anymore, it's Marriott, uh, but that will be like the top choices, choice, but there are many beautiful small boutique properties in Seville, um, I have a good combination. For a bigger hotel, I would say the Melia, Melia Colón, again Colón in the name, important for this part of Spain and for all of Spain, but especially this area, the Cologne or the Alfonso the Thirteenth, but if the travelers are looking for a more, you know, like a smaller uh, uh, hotel where to stay, no wonder I would go to I would go to to you know to Seville because there are many 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 choices. We can send you ideas. Okay, and back to the golf at Valderrama. Someone's asking if there was a President's Cup played there. Yeah, and Riders Cup, many things. This is one, I think it's number one golf course in Europe. So anything you can imagine. I don't play golf, so I have no idea. But <laughs> uh, yeah, personally, myself, of course, we know about golf and we send travelers to, to play golf everywhere uh, in, in Spain and Portugal. But, uh, you know, all the Riders Cup and all the important ones, yes. And I think Riders Cup is coming back to Spain soon. I think maybe Valderrama or nearby, maybe this year, yes. Excellent. Um, now, can we go back to the slide that shows where the, the natural parks are again so that people can understand the layout? Okay. You see my screen, right? Okay, so yes. that's at the beginning. Okay. Well, this is a little busy, so let's... Can I do this? It's working. Okay. So. This is Seville, this is Huelva City, and all this green in between is kind of the natural park in here. So the river goes all the way to Seville. So we're speaking about uh, 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 San Lucas de Barrameda and Jerez de la Frontera, and the other side of the river is the natural park. All this area is the natural park. Do you see my, my, my cursor? You see that? Yes, yes. My point so is like here. 
I will say that place. And let's see it in here. So this is Cadiz, but this is the natural park, all, all this area here, all this area. And I didn't do this presentation together with this because it's very separated by the river. And being the natural park so big on this side, I thought it was much better to be you know, separated. Okay. And how about um, El Rompido? How do we get there? Ooh, El Rompido is like here. If you see my cursor, it's like right there. So it's one hour drive from Seville. Very short. It's a very cool place. There you will see many, you know, very high class, top Spanish people, very wealthy people in there, but a very laid back, you know, no pressure. It's not Marbella. It's different. It's much better. <laughs> uh, Blanca, our relations manager for many years, is retired now. She used to go there on holidays. I don't know, maybe some of you remember Blanca. Well, that's it for the questions today. Um, just a quick reminder before I say goodbye, we are taking next week off for Thanksgiving. So our next session, which will be touching on Aracena, Jabugo, and Aroche, will be on Tuesday, December 1st at the same time at 6 p.m. So you'll all receive a reminder, of course. And um, that's it for me today. Happy Thanksgiving to those who celebrate. And Virginia? Happy Thanksgiving, everybody, and that includes you, Julia, because you are American, so very happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Stay well. Thank you, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.